Martin. The Alabama Crimson Tide and the Auburn Tigers. Auburn had a 10-game edge in the series at one time. Alabama came back to take a 10-game edge. Then last year, Auburn broke Alabama's 10-game winning string, 23-22. This time it is Auburn with a lofty ranking, third in the nation in the Sugar Bowl. A seven-game win streak, and Alabama would dearly love to break it today in Birmingham. This is the weather circumstance, the forecast as it exists right now. It's quite mild insofar as the temperature is concerned. The wind is not a factor. That bottom line of that graphic is, uh, is not very pretty. It has been very tough weather for the last 20 odd hours and it's going to stay tough that way for quite some time. But this is artificial surface here at Legion Field, so the footing is going to be good for them. As the day wears on, if we get a lot of rain, then the ball's going to get heavy, and it'll affect some things. Auburn receiving Brent Fullwood, the deep man. He is a freshman out of St. Cloud, Florida. Lionel James uh, sometimes does some of the receiving, but in this game to start it, we're going to use Brent Fullwood, and he's very, very quick. Terry Sanders, the man kicking off for white-shirted Alabama. He spins it downfield. It is short. It is taken by Ed Graham. Graham comes across the 20, moves it out near the 30, and Auburn will go to work from the 29. First down as Randy Campbell, a senior at 165 pounds, comes out to start at quarterback. Bo Jackson on the right side of the wishbone, 230 pounds. Lionel James, 5'7", 170 pounder at the other halfback. And the fullback is the freshman at 210 pounds, Tommy Agee. The wide receivers are Chris Woods. He's 6 feet, 185. Auburn works out of the wishbone. And you'll see a lot of Bo Jackson today. They send Wood way wide as they come to work from the 29. And on the first play of the ball game, Campbell throws it just as far as he can throw it. Chris Woods is down there and Alabama knocks it away. He had double coverage. So Auburn comes out, unlike Auburn, and puts the ball in the air as Campbell threw it just as far as he could throw it. Woods, number one, is just going to run a streak route. But uh, Auburn is going to try to let Alabama know early, we will throw the ball. If you bring your secondary up and put them on the line of scrimmage, we are going to pass it. And you can see the Alabama defenders, Stan Gray, number 28, is right there. Comes close to intercepting it, but uh, Woods fights it loose from uh, Gay and goes incomplete. Campbell didn't get a lot on that ball. It was kind of a, a weak goose floating around up there in that wind. So it is second down in ten for Auburn from their 29. And once again, the Alabama defensive people in very close as they give it to Lionel James. And he gets it around the corner and up to about the 33 before he is brought down by Emmanuel King. Up front for Auburn, Ed West is the tight end, 6'1", 235. Steve Wallace at tackle, 6'6", 265. David Jordan, 6'6", 260-pound senior of Goodwin. Ben Tamburello, 250-pound freshman. Jeff Lott, 270-pound guard. And Pat Arrington, 260-pound tackle at 6'6". And it is third down and six now for Auburn. <laughs> Alabama again. All the defensive people in very close. They're set up in a man defense in the secondary. Pitch it outside to Bo Jackson. And Jackson comes across the 40. He hits the sidelines up near the 45. And he's got an Auburn first down. As Stan Gay finally shoved him out. One of the great football players in America that you fans around the country have never heard of is Bo Jackson, number 34. We believe that he'd be All-American and maybe the best running back in America. Number 34, big, strong, 225 pounds, very, very fast. And he makes his muscle, puts his muscle to use there for the first down. He's averaging a mere seven yards per carry, having carried the ball 138 times for 965 yards coming into this game. He is a sophomore. First down, the ball is very close to the 45. Up the middle, Bo Jackson. And he goes for almost five yards as he reaches the 49. Alabama's defensive people, John Hand, Mike Rodriguez, and Randy Edwards up front. The linebackers, Cornelius, Bennett Emanuel, King, Wayne Davis, and Scott McRae at the secondary. Stan Gay, Sammy Hood, Ricky Thomas, and Freddie Robinson. They're playing a lot of young people. Change now, Vincent Elder, a sophomore from Decatur, Georgia, comes in at an inside linebacking position, replacing Wayne Davis. Second down, call it six for Auburn on their 49. Campbell outside with it. Jackson gets a block on the corner for Lionel James, turns it big, and he slips as he tries to cut back at the Alabama 28. And the Plainsmen are on the move. Emmanuel King brought him down. 
The key to the wishbone is the operation by the quarterback. He's going to fake to the fullback. The key tells him not to leave the ball with the fullback. Now the pitch, one thing that Alabama did not want to happen. Bo Jackson getting the ball outside behind a beautiful block by James, a halfback, and another beautiful block by Woods, the wide receiver, who is occupying the defensive back way downfield, even giving Jackson plenty of room to run. Call it the 29 of Alabama, just inside the 29, and a first down for Auburn. They're opening possession, and they're marching from their own 29. Alabama showing a seven-man front right now as they shift, and Bo Jackson slacks it over the left side and gets two yards. Cornelius Bennett, a freshman from Birmingham, an outbacker, making the tackle. He's 6'4", 215, a true freshman. And destined for stardom, it would seem, at Tuscaloosa. A look at the coaches now. That's Pat Dye of Auburn. What a great young coach he is. Started his head coaching career at East Carolina, moved to Wyoming, and back to Auburn. Just a great marriage between uh, the Auburn people, the school, and that young man. Second down and nine, gives Jackson one yard on that carry. Set it up in the wishbone. They've got a double wide alignment right now as they flex the tight end out. And Randy Campbell goes to throw, goes to the sidelines, overthrows Chris Woods. The split in. Britton Cooper defending for Alabama. Britton Cooper is another freshman who's playing in the defensive secondary. There's a look at Chris Woods, who's the leading receiver for Auburn. Here's the uh, Auburn offense per game, rushing and passing. You see there predominantly a a rushing team, the opponents, you can see how much yardage they have made passing as compared to running. But I want to say right now that the base defense that Alabama's used all year will not suffice against the wishbone. They plan, and I think we can see more of the blitzing and bringing in the, line, the defensive backs at the line of scrimmage. Clayton Buford is in at wide receiver right now. They break the bone and Campbell back to pass on third down and nine. Goes to the sidelines for Buford. He tries a one-handed grab at a pass. That seemed to be floating away, the wind dusting occasionally, and it caught that pass. Campbell did not have good rotation on it, and Buford couldn't pull it down. So Buford, it brings up a fourth down. Buford was a quarterback uh, as a freshman, has outstanding speed, runs a good route. You can see that he is open, but as Keith mentioned, the wind did get the ball sailing just a little bit. He nearly made a great second effort to pull it in, but couldn't quite do it. Gay was covering number 28. Al Del Greco comes in to try a 44-yard field goal. It will be into the wind. He has scored 225 points at Auburn during his career. He's a very effective place kicker, and he has a strong leg. He goes. The ball is loose. The quarterback picks it up. Mike Mann, the man throws to the sidelines. The ball came skittering back to Mann, and Mann never got control of it. Del Greco was past the point of no return in his movement, and so the Auburn Tigers have their field goal try go awry. The attempted field goal is really involves a three-man team, the center, the holder, and, of course, the kicker. But the holder, number 17, for Auburn, uh, Mike Mann fumbled the snap. It looked like it was a good snap. He just dropped it. Let's see if you can't uh, tell. The ball was right where it should be, right over the snap. All he has to do is grab it and put it on the tee, but he couldn't do it. Once Del Greco had committed himself, he was past the point of no return. So Alabama comes to the attack now with Perry Good, the freshman running back, carrying for the Crimson Tide, and he moves it from the 27 up to about the 30. Walter Lewis, the senior from Bruton, 6'1", 210, opens at quarterback for them. This is Kerry Good, who just carried the ball, 6 feet, 170, a freshman, a big fullback. He's an awfully good one. I mean, he is really a tough fellow. Ricky Moore, 235 pounds. Jesse Vendross, 6'1", 185, a flyer outside. And little Joey Jones, 5'9", and 165. Alabama will put it up there, working with the wind at their back. They'd love to run for a while, however, to get Auburn pulled in. But now... Lewis goes to the air. He goes incomplete to his tight end, Preston Gothard. Preston Gothard is 6'4", 210 pounds, couldn't reach that pass. Up front for Alabama, Hardy Walker, 6'4", 270. At guard, it's Mike Adcock, 6'3", 245. At center, the son of Billy, West Neighbors. And John McIntosh at the other guard, 6'1", 245. And Doug Vickers at tackle, 6'3", and 250. And it's third down and six now for Alabama from their own 31. Walter Lewis has, is really and truly 
the key man for Alabama's offense. So much rides with what he can do with it, and he's going to throw it again, throwing twice out of the first possession. He is hit as he delivers the ball, and it is almost picked off in the secondary. It was Quincy Williams who came roaring in to lay the pads on him. And Quincy Williams, remember, the last time we saw Auburn, played a very good ball game between the hedges over to Georgia and was a prime figure in Auburn's 13-7 victory. There are the defensive people for Auburn. The secondary, some people think there might be enough inexperience back there to make Walter Lewis's passing game work today. That time it did not. The punt by Malcolm Simmons spins it up in the air. Lionel James at his 25, coming back with it. Gets one block, looking for the corner. Gets it upfield and crosses the 40 to the 45. So the Auburn Tigers now with their second offensive possession on that 20-yard return by Lionel James. Very good field position at the 40. All traditional college football games are games of emotion. This is what Auburn quarterback Randy Campbell says. It means everything emotionally. Uh, we feel like if we, lose, if we were to lose this game, that it would destroy our whole season, even though we're 9-1 and one and already going to the Sugar Bowl. Uh, it, it means everything as far as uh, state championship or bragging rights, and it helps in recruiting, and you, you have to listen to it for a year. Randy Campbell, a comment from yesterday, and that latter part of his comment may be the most important. You have to listen to it for a year. Keith, uh, in my impression uh, about the Alabama offense is their receivers that we talked earlier are open. Lewis has not had the protection to get the ball to him. I have not seen the Alabama, the Auburn secondary do a good job of covering him so far. You've got two minutes and 53 seconds to play in the first quarter. It is the defensive front of Auburn right now, I think, that's got control of the football game. In fact, both defensive fronts seem to have control at that's this right. moment. They've got Ben Ross and Jones wide now on first down. Let's see if... Ray Perkins wants to go to the pass on first down, and he does, and he gets better protection out of it. And Lewis threw the ball hard over the middle, and Ricky Moore, the fullback, couldn't pull it down. Another problem may have been that he looked back into a very bright sun. Here's Randy Campbell, who's had an outstanding senior year. His leadership is just invaluable to this team. A wishbone quarterback, you can see he's completed 56% of his passes for 834 yards and seven touchdowns. Very both, vital part of the offense. Both quarterbacks in this game, however, are one for five and 13 yards here in the first quarter. Second down and 10. Got a little draw play. It's going to be a big one with Perry Good breaking it up the middle and getting an Alabama first down on the Auburn side of the field. Vic Beasley brought him down for the Tigers, and it's first down tied Auburn 47. From behind the defense, watch the hole open up naturally. On fake pass and run, you're going to see, uh, I guess that was Humphrey get blocked all the way inside. And Good comes right down the middle before Beasley finally brings him down. Another first down. Good on four carries, 53 yards from the Auburn 47. The Tide now moving with the sun and the wind at their back, and Lewis pitches outside. It's Good again. Got a great block over there and turns the corner. He got the block from Preston Gothard, the tight end, and Ben Beasley again makes the tackle. One thing that Alabama added uh, for this ball game was the triple option, something that, uh, of course, Walter Lewis has been uh, very successful uh, running for the last three years. They felt like they could put it in and maybe get outside and circle the defense, and they did for a nice game. I would think that's where you're going to find your, the path of least resistance against Auburn, outside. Second down, short six. And the right side of the Alabama line, Doug Vickers. Missing the snap count, and that draws the first flag of the ball game. The referee is Johnny Cooks, and Johnny is refereeing his final game as an SEC official. Native of Rome, Georgia, retiring after 26 seasons. In his playing days over at Georgia, he was an all-conference running back 1943. Harold Johnson, the umpire, and the rest of the officials you see reflected there. Foul, illegal procedure, false start on the offense. <coughs> well, Johnny stayed in good shape, hasn't he? He certainly has. I played against him in college. He was a very fine football player. So that backs him up five, and it's literally second down ten. Again, the little draw goes to the big fullback Moore. He looks around for a place to run and find some daylight, and once he gets up ahead of steam, you better bring a big stick to knock him down. He takes that football down to about the 36, and uh, an Alabama first down. Ben Thomas finally rested him off his feet. 
It was in the LSU game where we saw Alabama that Moore had a tremendous ball game. He's very strong. Watch number 91, Ben Thomas. Watch the effort. He's going to get knocked down by Vickers right there on the ground. But a good football player doesn't quit there. He knows that the play is still going. Watch him get up, make the second effort, the third effort, and comes over and helps in the tackle right there. And it's a first down for Alabama from the Auburn 36. The first threat of the day by Alabama. Lewis under pressure, gets his pass off. Pass is incomplete. Coming across was Kerry Good. Jesse Bendross was the short man. If Jesse had realized that Good was behind him and open, I'm sure he would not have tried to make the catch. Once again, the front four of the Auburn defense that we have two Southeastern Conference all-conference players on this unit put the pressure on Lewis. He had receivers open but did not have time to get an accurate pass to complete it. There's the Goodyear Blimp America from Houston, Texas. The captain is Jim Dexter from Smyrna Park, Maryland. Our cameraman up there with him is Art Pfeffer. Kind of a windy afternoon for him. And number 96, John Daly, defensive end levels. Walter Lewis for a big loss. What a great play by John Daly, and one that Auburn very desperately needed as Alabama was in field goal range. Watch from the left of your screen. Number 76 is going to be coming outside all the way now. Right there as Lewis has his receivers covered momentarily, and he throws Lewis to the ground for the sack. Auburn secondary did a good job of covering on that play. Otherwise, Lewis could have gotten the pass off. Ball has moved back beyond the Auburn 45. They've got to go to the 26 to get the first down. They need 19 yards on third down. Deep drop by Lewis, better protection this time. Auburn, however, dropping back the cover, and Lewis has nobody to throw it to. Now he's got some room to run, and he is a good runner. And he wiggles his way on downfield to about the 32. Greg Carr finally ran him down, a linebacker for Auburn. And we have come to the end of the first 15 minutes of this ball game between the old foes, Auburn and Alabama, and there is no score. One would have thought Alabama might have had a little more uh, sensitivity toward the clock and spent another time out in order to give uh, Van Tiffin a chance to kick with the win on a 48-yard field goal try. Now he's got to try to hit it into the win. That's a very long kick with the way the wind's swirling at that end of the stadium. Everything is good on it. Ball is up and no good. Wind kind of pushed it out and knocked it down, and so Alabama is turned away. As we have said, this is a game of legacy for Paul Bryant, the Bear, and Pat Dye, the Auburn coach, worked with him for six years and says this about the man. But working for Coach Bryant was a, was a, uh, had to be a, a great importance to me in my coaching career because I learned a great deal of football from him. I was, I was with him for nine football seasons, eight and a half years, and, um, we became very close friends. And I, I, needless to say, I had tremendous respect for him, and uh, there's no question in my mind or any other people that have been close to him. Oh. Bo Jackson, as his coach was talking, improvises, goes outside, and watch Bo Jackson with 9-5 speed gets outside and see you later. He goes 69 yards and Auburn takes the lead of the ball game. A big block for him. Chris Wood hit the free safety. Freddie Robinson took him out of the play and Bo was gone. The people in Auburn say the coaches that Bo Jackson doesn't know how good he can be. He may be one before he graduates one of the very great players in America. Del Greco for the extra point try. The snap was high. The holder, Mike Mann, pulled it down quickly and well. And the kick is good, and it's 7-0. And Bo Jackson now with five carries, 109 yards. He has now moved over 1,000 yards at 1,066. From the end zone, watch this spectacular play. Jackson is going to be hit at the line of scrimmage. There's absolutely nothing there. But every great football team has a fact that can make something happen on his own. He can defeat the defensive man one-on-one. He can improvise. He can turn a bad play into a good play. Now watch Woods number one. Watch number one make the key block. He has tremendous speed, just the same kind of speed as Jackson. And he comes over and makes the very last block to the right of your screen. I hope we can see it. 
Yes, right there. He knocks down Freddie Robinson, number 21. We've got to see that again. Just a sensational play by one man's effort. Nothing there. Alabama defense plays it perfectly. But here's Wood. The alertness of Wood, knowing what speed that Jackson has to take the proper angle and to knock Robinson, the safety man, down, allowing Jackson to go in for the touchdown. 69 yards, and Auburn jumps out to a 7 to nothing lead and will kick off now as the offensive team rests on the sideline. Bo Jackson. Keith, the Alabama defense had played beautifully since the first possession of Auburn's. They had stopped Auburn cold. They had that play stopped cold, and one play, one player, his effort, turns it into a touchdown. Joe Carter is the deep man for Alabama. The wind gets the kick and carries it well back into the end zone. He's coming out with it. The wedge breaks down at the 16, and down goes Joe Carter. Alabama will be going into the wind, which might have some effect on the passing. But the Alabama offense, to be successful, it's a finesse offense, meaning they finesse plays, running plays, off of the passing. That's what they've been successful with so far. Auburn ranked third in the nation, headed for the Sugar Bowl. They only Texas in second place, Nebraska in first place ahead of them. They still think they might be able to pull off a miracle and win a national championship. Here's the pitch back to Perry Good, and Good carries for Alabama up near the 25. After 15 minutes of play, here are your steps. Neither, neither team really had the upper hand in that first quarter, just as even as it could possibly be. Both teams missed the field goal. The surprising thing is that Alabama's defense had done a good job of stopping the Auburn rushing game, and then Auburn's pass defense had limited Lewis to only 13 yards. Yeah, but that 69-yard shot by Jackson <laughs> will distort those numbers somewhat, won't they? In the second quarter, they look considerably different, unless Alabama can put something together right here. Good play by Good. He's got about a yard and a half for a first down as Lewis puts it up. Sideline pattern thrown out of bounds. You throw it that high in the air, the wind is going to affect it, and it pushed it off the field of play that time. Good, the intended receiver, covered by David King. Alabama had a waist down. It was second down and uh, one, so they decided to use a little gadget play, a little fake reverse, send their receiver out of the backfield deep, hoping they could uh, match him up with a linebacker, but it didn't happen. The safety man was covered. You really think against that Auburn defensive front that uh, third down and yard and a half is easy? <laughs> no, I, well, I should say it's easier than third and two. <laughs> They're going to pitch it wide, and they get the first down as Good pops through there. Coming up to support on the play, David King. King couldn't quite get to him. And Jim Bone also didn't quite get a hand on him. And Good runs. He's a good-looking running back. He I'll is, Keith. But look at the block by Ricky Moore, number 26. That's the key. Watch Moore come right here and knock down King, number 27. That's the block that springs Good into the secondary. And as Keith said, he has that ability to leap over and make the nice game. You know, he's got 80 yards himself. <laughs> and just the freshman, and Jackson is just a sophomore. Good is out now, and Joe Carter comes in to replace him at the eye back or tailback position, and Walter Lewis is back to pass. Has good protection. Throws it down the middle. Joe Jones. Little Joey comes down to the Auburn 45 and makes the catch where King makes the tackle. That's Joey Jones, number four's 30th reception of the year. What a fine, fine receiver he is. But the thing on this pattern, Walter Lewis has got time. The, Auburn, the Alabama offensive line protected him to where he could set up, read the coverage, identify the receivers and open receivers, and you can see Jones right in the middle for the reception. Anytime you see a five foot nine inch, 165 pounder going over the middle to catch a pass, you know he's a tough football player, don't you? Yes, you do. 45 yard line, first down. The play goes into the middle with Ricky Moore, the 235 pound junior from Huntsville, pounds on down close to the 40. Ricky Moore can be the key in this ball game for Alabama also. He's the leading rusher for Alabama the last three years. He's averaging five foot, five yards, over five yards per try. Big, strong, six foot tall, 235. Keith, there's no way he can get a real head here on him. Not enough room. Good is back in now. Carter out. Carey giving a chance for a breather after two hard runs. At it second down and six. That's Ricky Moore. 
Hard to bring down, isn't he? Number 45, Jimmy Warren, finally got enough of him and took him down, but he's got a first down for the Crimson Tide at 12 and a half minutes to go in the first half, and Auburn leading 7 to nothing. Well, Alabama gets just right uh, against the Auburn defense. Auburn was bunched inside, expecting uh, the play to come in the middle. Ricky Moore, we see what he's done so far this year. Four consecutive 100-yard games. Donnie Humphrey comes out for a breather. Gerald Williams goes in to replace him defensively for Auburn. It is Alabama at the Auburn 31. Walter Lewis pitches the ball outside the good. Good surrounded by three blue shirts. Down he goes at the 20. Principal tackler was Jimmy Warren. Great acceleration by Drew. He really slashes in there. If he has, the, the coaches told me that he can be going full speed after one step. Now, we've heard that, and I've heard that all my life, but coaches say that uh, he can't do that. But on that last play, all, Alabama circled all the defense with option play, and Joy Jones, the wide receiver, making the key block. It's first down Crimson Tide at the Auburn 20. And trailing by seven and threatening now. That's Ben Gross, number 88, coming back into the picture toward the ball as Lewis drops. He's going to the end zone with it for Joey Jones. Touchdown! These are feuds, these old traditionals. You may have the better players, but you better put your hat on hard, and the extra point kick by Tiffin is good. And we're all even at 11 minutes and 42 seconds to play in the first half. Alabama now seven, and Auburn seven. An impressive possession by Alabama. 20-yard touchdown pass Walter Lewis to Joey Jones. They ran four running plays and threw the ball four times on the eight snaps in that touchdown march. Keep with, excuse me, when a team has the threat to run and pass, it puts added pressure on the opposing defense. That's what we're witnessing right there. Terry Sanders into the win. Brent Fullwood is deep for Auburn. Low kick, handled well at the three by Fullwood. Comes out across the 20, and that is bit back. Let's look go. at the touchdown. Yeah. From the end zone, when the offensive line block the blitz, your defense is in trouble. Walker and Nickers hold the blitz out, giving Lewis plenty of time to see the receiver and hits him for the touchdown. Now let's watch the route that Joy Jones runs. Now Joy Jones is a senior, outstanding. Walker number 45 is trying to cover him. You can see he's beat up from the very beginning of the play. All Lewis has got to do is have time and get the ball there. But it is a very fine catch as Jones watches it into the hand. Auburn to the attack now from their 21. Campbell coming down, delivers outside. Bo Jackson being tackled over there. 97, Cornelius Bennett. Right place, right time. That's about the fourth tackle that Bennett's logged in this ball game so far. Bennett is going to be a very dominant football player. He stands six foot five, weighs 230, and the coaches tell me he's the third fastest player of the freshman class, running a 4-5, he was a fullback in high school. Number 97. There's a loss of yard on the carry. After the play by Bennett, second down, 11 Tigers. 7-7 seven, seven ball game. Campbell, outside, Lionel James, blocked from Jackson. James turns to the 28. Short of the first down, they're gonna need about three as John Hand, defensive tackle, Floated outside with a play and made the hit. Randy Campbell changed the play at the line of scrimmage. He went to the triple option. He wanted to get the ball pitched. He did, and uh, Alabama did recover in time with hand making the play short of the first down. Auburn has played eight bowl teams. They've beaten seven. Texas, the only one to whoop them. Third down and three. Campbell, quick pop. Woods had his man wide open and missed him. Woods had come into the ball game, brought the play, and Campbell uh, had everything going, had everything set, except he did not throw the ball accurately. 
on third and short yardage against the wishbone, you put your defensive backs and just about everybody on the line of scrimmage. Alabama did. Gambling, the pass went incomplete because of the wide throw. Lewis Colbert to punt, pressure on him, kick is away. High hanging kick for Greg Richardson, a quick freshman from Mobile, trying to go outside, nothing to it. He's tumbled out of bounds, and you've got a penalty flag thrown on the sidelines as they go rolling out of bounds, and it might have been a tackle out of bounds. It might be an unnecessary roughness call here. That was a 50-yard punt by Colbert. You've got 10 minutes and 6 seconds to play. We're waiting for the call now as the referee, Johnny Cooks, talks with the linesman who made the call over there. Five-yard face mask. Hey! Johnny Cook says face mask on the tackle. So they'll assess a penalty against the Auburn Tigers, and Alabama again will have very good field position as the sun is out bright right now. A five-yard penalty for incidental grabbing of the face mask on the tackle on the sideline, and it moves the football out just beyond the 29 for Alabama. Tim Brandt on the sidelines for us again today. Feet maybe a little bit, but so far he's been able to stay dry. Joe Carter and Ricky Moore are the setbacks now. As Walter Lewis goes to work, hands it off inside, or did he keep it? No, he kept it. And number 99, Doug Smith, had a hold of him along with Greg Carr. Greg Carr wearing number 54. That was the uniform number and the uniform uh, that was taken aboard uh, the space shuttle. Watch Smith, number 99. He's an all-conference player last year and this. He penetrates. And by penetrating, he really disrupts the ball handling of the wishbone. Lewis has no chance. Lewis comes, excuse me, Smith comes clean in the backfield and just wraps him up and holds him until the play is over. Big Doug from Bayboro, North Carolina, had played for Pat Dye up at East Carolina. When Pat went to Wyoming, he dropped out of the game for a year. But when Pat came to Auburn, he transferred. And Walter Lewis back. Smith after him. Lewis throws it in the crowd. Joey Jones was over there, and Walter threw it about nine feet over his head. And why not? Because that big horse Smith was thundering down his throat. Third down. And Lewis the throw. Gets away and gets some of it back. They almost had him back inside the 25 as Doug Smith continues to make life miserable for Walter Lewis. Every good defense has one or two defensive linemen that can apply pressure without the blitz. Auburn applied the pressure on Lewis, forcing him to keep the ball without the blitz, and that was a key third down for Auburn's defense. Now Alabama has to kick into the wind. Malcolm Simmons had a bad kick last time on the 25 yards. He's got to hit this one into the wind. He gets some spin on it. But the wind knocks it down rather quickly. However, it bounces around in favor of Alabama and finally goes dead at the 41. That was on the 30-yard punt. So that wind is tough going from left to right. I'd like to tell you something that's very important to all of us because next Tuesday night, the gentleman to my right, Coach Frank Broyles, will be put into the National Football Foundation Hall of Fame. And it's an honor so richly deserved, and we're just as proud as we can be of you, Coach. O.J. Simpson is also going in with you, with others, and we're delighted for you. Thank you, Chief. It's Randy Campbell carrying. Never really had a chance. Number 21, Freddie Robinson, the free safety, had stepped into the hole. They'd opened it up, but then suddenly Robinson appeared, and Randy really didn't have a whole lot of brothers. He picked up five, and for a moment, if Robinson hadn't filled the gap, he might have gone for a lot more. Keith, that's a great thrill for me, but I'm also privileged to be going in with my close friend, Daryl Royal, and also the legendary Woody Hayes. Like it's been said, that ain't a bad crowd to hang around with. <laughs> Second down, call it four and a half. Campbell quickly to the sidelines, his pass on target. Clayton Buford just beyond the marker gets a first down for Albert. Buford is a junior out of Palatka, Florida. Buford has outstanding speed. The defensive cornerback has got to give him some room. No reason to get up and play him very tight and uh, take the chance of going behind him. Uh, Campbell had been very poor throwing the ball early, and so they just spotted him that little flat pass and made the completion for the first down. At the Alabama 48, 
7-7 ball game. Eight minutes to go, first half. Up the middle goes Bo Jackson. And once again, he did it on his own, pretty much, once they got him past the, the line of scrimmage. Watch Jackson run over the linebacker. Number 45, McRae, is being tied up a little bit by the blocker, but uh, he jumps right over it. You can see the agility of this big man. One thing that really impressed me was that uh, Jackson outran Herschel Walker last spring in a 60-yard dash, which tells you something about his speed. He's rolling today, isn't he? Oh, my goodness. First down for Auburn, Alabama, 36. And it's Kimball giving the ball to Jackson. He's on the loose outside. That was a good, solid tackle by Freddie Robinson, who's 6'1", 175. But Freddie is just overmatched against Jackson, who's 6'1", 230, with all that speed. Keith, uh, Pat Dye told us all of, of the staff that J Jackson had had the best practices this past week that he had in all of the time that he'd been there. This young man didn't know exactly what was happening to him last year. He threatened to quit uh, after the before the Alabama game last year, but he's got things straightened out, and he's just a great football player. Tim Jesse replaces Jackson now after that run. He gets a breather. Jesse, 6'1", 200 pounds. He's from up and a sophomore. And they take it inside with the fullback, Tommy Agee. The field's wet, obviously, from the rain that we have had, but as the wind continues to blow and the sky continues to appear, that it's going to stay clear. It'll get pretty dry along toward the second half of this game. No one has really mishandled the ball. We had the one field goal miss because the holder didn't get it down. But otherwise, we've been blessed here with pretty good weather after such a forbidding forecast. Keith, it sure is a better football game for everybody when uh, you have uh, decent weather. As we look at Pat Dye and the tremendous job that he's done here at Auburn. Ball is down inside the 16 of Alabama as Campbell gives to Lionel James. And James trying to get outside, uses his speed and picks up pretty good yardage. He had nobody in front of him, literally, but white shirts. But Lionel James is so quick, he just kept bouncing outside, outside. And one of the officials was one of the gentlemen holding the marker was run into and knocked down and is in some pain. Keith Lionel James is one of the real stories of college football in the South. He's very small, but the coaches will tell you he's the best blocker on the football team. He gets right in the running gears, and he has that elusiveness. Even though he's not all that fast, according to the coaches, he gives you the illusion that he is has blazing speed. And you can see Stan Gade, number 28, coming up from the outside cornerback, tries to wrestle him down to the ground, but not before a nice game. Well, you see the Alabama player realizing that he was out of bounds and he was going to get involved in a late hit penalty in dodging James collided with the gentleman holding the marker. That young Alabama player was Cornelius Bennett. Well, that's a lot of <laughs> weight coming and whistling across at his speeds, 215 pounds, and I, I think they're going to have to replace that man who uh, was <clears throat> handling the marker. I'm sorry, I don't know his name, but he, uh, he really took a whack across the knees as Bennett came across trying to avoid James and avoid the penalty. You've got 6.16 to play in the first half, and it's all even at 7. We do have to get a replacement for the marker crew over there, and the game now will resume. Uh, Pat Dye on the right and uh, Ray Perkins on the left. A 7-7 ball game. Time winding down first half. Auburn's ball. It is third down for them. The ball is sitting just short of the 12. They've got to go near the eight. We call it about four yards. They're definitely in Del Greco's field goal range if they're unable to pick up sufficient yardage here. Jackson is back in the backfield. Campbell walked down, looping around. Cornelius Bennett one more time. Just on sheer athletic ability, Cornelius Bennett makes a sensational play number 97 and stopping the quarterback short of a first down. Campbell had no chance to go after Cornelius Bennett, number 97, just reached out and threw him to the turf. And that brings in Del Greco for a 29-yard field goal try on the season, four for four from this distance. Mike Mann, the holder. Mike Mann fumbled the last snap on the field goal attempt. That one's clean. 
And the kick is good. And you've got five and a half minutes to go in the first half. And Auburn moves back on top by a score of 10 to 7. Here's the kickoff. I going deep into the corner and beyond the field of play. And they'll come back to the 20 for this possession. Auburn out in front by a score of 10 7. Of course, ABC Sports will be back down here in the Birmingham area next summer, too, in August, for the PGA Golf Championship out at Shoal Creek. What a golf course that is. Ranked 26th in the nation, I think, the last the in the country, in the world. That's yeah. right. By one of the golf magazines. Keith and I tried to play it. Keith played good. I didn't yesterday. <laughs> no, that's I admit true. that. <clears throat> On the 20, Alabama to the attack. Lewis Keith. Pitches outside, good loose. Trying to get to the marker and he comes up just short. What a tremendous block by the splitting coming in and picking up the free safety. He happened to be supporting the, the pitch play. It freed the ball carry to go on down for a nice game. As we look at the Alabama offensive line and the huddle and what carried good, the freshman running back has done so far. When you get outside on Auburn out of their defensive scheme, those cornerbacks have really got some pressure on them, don't they? Yes, they do. In particular, the free safety also. Lewis back. Going deep. Joey Jones on the dead run. Out of bounds. Jimmy Warren covering. They just ran out of real estate. Jimmy had him on the boundary, and uh, the boundary was helping with the defense. Well, Joey Jones is tremendous receiver. Has outstanding speed he knows he's got that experience and he's working on Jimmy Warren number 45 but it's very short yardage and Jimmy Warren doesn't have to be worried about up there if they run up the middle they're going to make the first down so he very wisely stays back and makes the play and prevents the reception Walter Lewis is now broken Scott Hunter's Alabama season record with 245 pass attempts he better let his arm rest he's cranking it up a lot Third and one. It's good. Oh, what a whack at the line of scrimmage, but it looks like he's got it. I don't know exactly who it was. They went helmet to helmet with him, whether it was uh, Greg Carr or Quincy Williams, but you could hear the collision a half a mile away. It is a first down. Keith, the impressive thing for Alabama has been the execution of Walter Lewis on the option play, something that he ran for three years under Bear Brown, and also when he had time, his passing. From the 30, first and 10 for the tie. Tommy Bell, the safety is creeping up. Now he drops off. They run the ball to his side of the field, and Perry Good runs it up across the 45 to the 46, and another Alabama first down. Quincy Williams finally runs him down. You know what, Frank? If if Tommy Powell had, had come on up there and filled that position where he had started, uh, he'd have stopped the play probably. But by this time, Good's got up a full head of steam and open field, and he's hard to catch. Well, I think Quincy Williams, number 93, makes a tremendous. He's going to charge himself up outside, which is really a bad defensive play. But he recovers and chases the ball carry. Good defensive players never give up. And Quincy Williams makes a fine play. Very good now. 11 carries and 114 yards. And Joe Carter trying to get outside and does. And picks up a big game for Alabama. So here comes Alabama now exercising the option play and the outside. It, was generally felt by those of us who have seen these two teams and studied them over the last few days that that's where Alabama might be able to run if they could get outside. Well, Joe Carter ran right through the arms of probably the best tackler in the Auburn secondary, Tommy Powell, number nine. Powell had him for a short gain, but Carter just ran right through him for the big game. And a first down. Ball now on the Auburn side of the field is just short of the Tiger 43. 10-7, Auburn leads, 3.57 to go, first half. Lewis pitches to the fullback, Ricky Moore. And there's a pretty good size collision when Moore comes banging into Jeff Jackson and company. But he's got yardage, he's got four. Well, the Alabama offense is doing a good job of mixing up the fake pass and run, which has been their big playmaker, but they mixed in enough option plays to keep the Auburn defense completely off balance. Pickup is about three and a half, actually. The comparison of Good of Alabama and Jackson of Auburn. 
Both running backs having a big day. Second down, six and a half from the 40. Lewis hands it off inside. Moore to about the 36. He's got to get near the 33, so it'll be about three yards on third down. I think we should point out that Goode's 114 yards exceeds the average total of the teams that have played against Auburn in the first 10 ball games. 106 yard average. Shows you what that young freshman can do. Big, big conversion down coming up. The third short three. Lewis still got it. Quincy Williams after him. Lewis has got the first down. He's inside the 20. He's knocked down at the 14. First down, Alabama. How valuable can a quarterback that can run a 4-5 feet to your football team? Here is a perfect example. The receivers are covered. Auburn could not do a better job of covering more in the flat and the end on the curl. But watch the speed of young Walter Lewis, who runs a 4-5, weighs 205 pounds, turns it into a successful play. And a first down on the Auburn 14. Alabama trying to get the lead here in the late going of the first half. It's Lewis calling his own number. Came outside, nobody to pitch. Turned it back inside, and Doug Smith knocks him down as he runs inside the 10 near the 7. The Alabama offense really has got the momentum going. And Walter Lewis, as we said earlier, he was going to be a busy man. Throwing the ball, scrambling, and running the option play. Some coaches would say it can't be done. Run the option play and throw the ball effectively. Walter Lewis has proven them all wrong. Auburn right now has gone to a goal line defense as they put Ben Thomas in. And Walter Lewis hands it off inside. Lewis was hit just as he made his pivot. But the ball was gone to Ricky Moore, the fullback, the up man out of the eye, and Moore's inside the five. Walter Lewis, being the senior, really wants to have a great ball game. Last week uh, uh, against Boston College, he was uh, only four out of 12. The team had four fumbles, and they got beat. This young man's had an outstanding career. In fact, he's the only Alabama player to ever gain over 5,000 yards. That says something for this young man's ability. They are the length of the football away from a first down. This is third down coming up. Everybody is jammed inside. Lewis slides off the right side guard, John McIntosh, and the center, Wes Neighbors, and would appear to have a first and goal. He's got it. Keith, the clock is a factor right now. Uh, all Alabama has two timeouts and there's 51 seconds left to play. They just spent one of those timeouts stopping the clock at 51, trying to take the lead at halftime. You've got 51 seconds to play in the first half. Auburn leading by three points. Alabama owns the football. First down and goal to go just outside the Auburn three. Keep the key factor here could be the option play. For Walter Lewis, he's keeping it going outside. On a throw. Lobs it out. Joe Carter. Touchdown, Bama. goodness Keith the man in motion confused the Auburn secondary and they busted their coverage look how wide open Carter number 46 is when the Alabama put Blanker Jones in motion it forced a change in the coverage and Auburn did not make the adjustment Van Tiffin's extra point kick is good Van Tiffen is now 36 for 36 and extra points and Alabama has the lead, 14 to 10. Welcome back to Legion Field, where early in the second half, the Tigers were able to decrease the deficit when Al Del Greco nailed a 26-yard field goal. With the score now 14-13 tied, we resume our coverage midway through the third quarter here on ESPN Classic. Alabama will be looking at a third down and 10 
today. They have converted on third down four times in ten tries. 7 3 to play third quarter. And the Tide leads by a point. That's Jones in motion. And Lewis back. They're going to get him. Fumbles the football. Auburn will not get it. Goes all the way across the field and out of bounds. Gerald Robinson came looping from the blind side and walloped Walter Lewis. Walter lost the ball. Two Auburn men pursuing it and could not catch up with it until it went out of bounds. Gerald Robinson has tremendous speed coming from the left of your screen. Runs a 4-6, weighs 220. Just a sophomore. Makes a great individual effort. Once again, I think we should keep pointing out Auburn's defense has been able this year to come up with a big play when it's most needed, and that was a typical illustration of it. And they should get the football and very good field position because Malcolm Simmons now is going to be standing back around his goal line. The ball tumbling out of bounds uh, back inside the 10 at the 9. So out of the end zone, steps to the goal line, hits it up in the air. Wind's going to knock it down. Lionel James coming up. Falling fair catch, the wind blows it back down the field, and Alabama finally stops the roll on it, and here's Auburn camped on Alabama's front porch after a 17-yard punt. Give the defense of Auburn credit. Walter Lewis came out and was going to throw the ball. The rush got to him. He had to throw before he was ready, and the Auburn defense having the momentum after the field goal, bringing the game to 14 to 13 took the ball away again in this good field position first down for the Tigers at the Alabama 26 645 to go in the third quarter give the ball to Jackson is what I would expect him to do and we better hurry he does Jackson was chased and turned back inside as Lionel James was not able to affect the block out there at Alabama had two people they expected the same thing that you called and they turned him back inside and stopped him down around the 23. Lewis Campbell the defensive backfield coach at Alabama told me that we're going to overshift the wide side of the field when the ball is on Auburn's right so that we can stop Jackson and force him to turn it in. Gave him a two yard pickup on that and make it second down in about eight. This is given off to Jackson, and uh, he slides past one man, but losing his momentum goes down at the 20, and Cornelius Bennett is in on the play for Alabama. A little, a little misdirection play, but watch this young freshman play. He's unblocked, but he also has the quickness, the presence of mind to see the play, and he's strong enough to go in and trip Bo Jackson after just a short game. Again, Auburn's in third and uh, uh, five situation, been unsuccessful the last two times. Got to throw the ball. Well, Campbell keeps it, dives, goes to the 15, and should have a first down for Auburn. Randy Campbell called his own number and picks up the first down. Alabama did exactly what they wanted to do, force Randy C Campbell to keep it for the left side. Watch the bottom of the screen, the left side of the line, do a good job of blocking, particularly on Randy Edwards. He, they forced Randy Edwards all the way back into the backfield, allowing plenty of room for Randy Campbell to fall and die for the critical first down. Now Auburn getting closer to the front door as they're sitting at the 15 with the first down. <laughs> Campbell putting it up on first down, going into the corner for Buford. No. Almost only the hand of Stan Gay, the presence of Gay, perhaps. I'm not even sure he touched the ball. Well, one thing that Campbell is doing, he's throwing into double coverage, something that I know Pat Dye doesn't want. You can see the linebacker, Thomas, number 34, covering him short. So now they have a deep man back there with him, Stan Gay, and Gay cuts in front, takes a chance to go for the ball, and just let's see. Didn't touch it. Didn't touch it. Just goes right through Buford's hands. Now it's fourth. Now it's second down. You can see there that uh, Gay took a chance, went for the interception. Normally, you, what you ideally, you want him to go through the receiver and get the ball if he possibly can, but not take the chance. So a second down and 10 at the 15. Auburn trailing by a point. They take a timeout to talk about matters. Well, during the timeout, everybody's... Trying to come up with an idea. <laughs> Good point, Chief. Our producer coach, Chuck Howard. We got a roasting last night from his colleagues at our season-ending party. 
suggests Ed West the tight end. Ed has not seen the ball since early in the ball game back in the first quarter. Drag him across the middle and see what happens. Second down and ten. Nope. They go to Lionel James. And nothing doing. He's whacked down by John Hand just over the 15. In each of the three possessions, uh, the last three possessions of Auburn, they had thrown the ball on first down and failed to make a first down and went to, what, two field goals, and now they're third and long again, throwing on first down. And the, uh, I'm sure Pat uh, Dye's not called, and what's happening is Camel is changing the play. He looks at it, identifies the coverage, and goes for the pass, but it's been incomplete each time. All right, they've got West flexed out wide now this time so he's not in a tight position but a wide receiver position set up a screen for Lionel James and uh, he cannot get back to the line of scrimmage and I think it's John Hand that messed it up again Freddie Robinson also up in on the play it was a blitz of all out sell out blitz by the Alabama defense Camel had no chance to set it up the linebacker was right over there on the screen uh, play and that brings Del Greco in for a 34 yard field goal try at 353 of the third quarter as Auburn goes to the lead now Del Greco has kicked seven field goals in one ball game against Kentucky that's up six I'm sorry six field goals. and it's good <laughs> and Auburn regains the lead over Alabama by a score of 16 to 14 well, the Alabama defense uh, feels, I'm sure, that uh, the, on the three possessions, they forced three field goals. In the fourth quarter, keep this in mind, Alabama will have the win to their back. One thing that you well, you learn to, to believe in the wishbone, that once you get inside the 15-yard line, it's the goal line offense by, by design, you would take it on in and score. But what's happened is the last three possessions, Auburn has not got the touchdown, has gone for the field goal, and the reason... The forward pass, the forward pass, something that's out of character for a wishbone team. Yeah, but you know what happened last week in the ball game uh, between Texas and Texas A&M when Texas turned around and finally got the wind at their back and put McIver in the game. They ran off 45 unanswered points. Ball is sitting down on the 40 now for Del Greco's kick. Joe Carter is deep. 16-14 Auburn back in the lead at 3.39 to go in the third quarter. And it's way back in the end zone and there'll be no return by Carter. So once again, Alabama's got to go from the 20. And Alabama to the attack now as Lewis pitches the ball outside to carry good. And Auburn now watching him with a, a little sterner look. Because he hurt him in that first half getting outside. Vic Beasley, the free safety, number 31, came up and made the hit on him after two-yard pickup. The stunt that, that, that Auburn was using, the free safety had the pitch. Something is very dangerous. Alabama was successful in the first half, unsuccessful on the last play. Beasley, the safety, making the play. They've got Bendross out on uh, the lower part of the screen now against David King, and Bendross hasn't seen the ball all day. This is good getting outside. And getting across the 30 all the way to the 35. And an Alabama first down. And a very critical first down. The first uh, first down, I should say, for Alabama this half. Good made a sensational run. This is fake pass and run. There's nothing there where he'd been breaking the play, but he has the presence of mind to break outside. Nothing inside. Try the outside. And he shows his speed and goes down the boundary. And finally, he's knocked out of bounds, but not, not before he makes the first down. David the biggest uh, game of the season for an Alabama running back. He has 128 yards now on 14 carries. Lewis pitches outside. Joe Carter. Carter weaves his way for about eight yards. Up across the 40 to the 43. At 2.50 to go in the third quarter. And Auburn leading Alabama by two, 16-14. Greg Carr, number 54, is what college football is all about. He's a great football player, outstanding student in civil engineering. He jumps right over the blocker and comes right out and makes the play on Carter. Otherwise, it would have been a big gain for the Crimson Tide. Second down, seven. Uh, second down, three. Picked up seven. Inside, Ricky Moore, the fullback, breaks it loose. And he's on his way. Touchdown, Alabama. There's a oh. no flag. Fifty-seven yards. How in the world does a fullback run right up the middle 
untouched after he breaks the line of scrimmage for a touchdown. It's very simple when you're in the blitz and your defensive back are chasing receivers all over the field. No one, and I mean no one, knows that Ricky Moore's got the ball. Least of all, David King over on the right of your screen who is covering the receiver, and finally he realizes that it's not a pass, and he still tries to make the play, but he couldn't bring Ricky Moore down. Moore now has 101 yards in the ball game. So Alabama with two backs over 100 yards. And Alabama has called a timeout. Walter Lewis going to the sidelines. And it looks to me like they're cooking up something for a two-point try after their touchdown. With 2.20 to go in the third quarter, 2016 Alabama. Well, they figured out what they want to do. They are definitely going for two. If they can get the two, then they'll be back to a six-point lead. If they were to kick the point, they would only... Uh, Lead by five. Keith, there'll be seven point lead. Seven point. Yeah. Get back on multiples of seven. Walter Lewis gets away, throws it in the end zone, and it's incomplete. So Lewis pounding along suddenly looked back into the center of things and he saw Preston Garthard and tried to get the ball to him, and he couldn't do it. And so Alabama's lead remains at four. 20 to 16. Let's, Let's go back again to the touchdown. And watch this run by Ricky Moore, the fullback. He's going to pop right up the middle. Al Auburn is in a blitz. The safeties are all firing. So Moore breaks on open field. He says, where is everybody? There's no one there except David King, number 27, who comes across and tries to tackle it high at 180 pounds at 235. No way. Now watch Ben draws. You think experience is not important? And having a good football team, number 88 is outside the of the blocker on the run. He's decoying King back. Finally, King recognizes the run, but uh, Bendros backs away and says, "No, I can't block him. It would be a flip." And he stays all five in the line. The touchdown run. Pick off. Try to keep it low into the wind. It's picked up short around the 12 by Ed Graham, and Graham comes on back up field to about the 29. I don't want to belabor the point, Frank, but what's four and two? <laughs> Is it 16? I'm sorry. I thought that was a 15. You're right. Graham returned that uh, pickoff, and his brother plays for Alabama. Both of them were walk-ons. Ed Graham has earned uh, earned a uh, scholarship at Auburn. Keith, I read it as 15. I apologize. <laughs> I thought it was 15. Seven is 22. <laughs> Andy Campbell gives to Bo Jackson. Jackson's on his way. Goodbye. In your face. 71 yards for Bo Jackson. Jackson has now run for 246 yards in this ball game, two touchdowns, his career best. One of the Alabama sports writers said to, in an article recently, he's the best football player in America that America has never heard of. Yeah, they will sure. after this. Yeah, so. <laughs> oh my goodness. Ricky Moore comes up with a sensational play and runs 57 yards. Jackson answers with a 71-yarder. Keith, I missed the play. I was looking. I was actually looking to see about the scoreboard. And when I looked up, here is Jackson right now. This is the first time I've seen it. But the block by AJ was the key. And watch the speed, how he accelerates and dodges Robinson number 21. Just enough to pick up his feet, an old running drill that we used to do every day when we didn't have backs like Bo Jackson that could do it naturally. <laughs> Wide receivers always have to know how to block. On running football teams particularly, now Chris Woods has already made one great block that sprung Jackson for the touchdown. Watch him here. See what he does on Gay number 28. Gay is a senior, and he gets just enough of the leg right there. Just a beautiful effort by Chris Woods, who was on the opposite side of the run, and he slowed Gay down enough that he couldn't make the play. Good team effort. 
And Auburn's back on top, 23 to 20. Well, Greco's kickoff with two minutes. <laughs> Keith, what's happened? That's here? the old Charlie Brown trick. The ball rolled off the tee, and he almost whiffed it. <laughs> well, I guess Auburn's going to have to put one of their covering men over to hold the ball. The wind has picked up. Yeah, it's strong. Yes, they're going to have to take one of their covers out of the the coverage. And of course, uh, Del Greco should kick it out of the end zone. He has on the pass four times. Got the wind to his back. What is the score, Keith? I'm not going to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good football game, isn't it? Oh, it's a great game. What you learn to expect in these two teams. Good. Carter's coming. Joe Carter to the 16. Keith, I, I don't think I've ever seen in one football game a better single performance on individual effort than Bo Jackson has, has done tonight, today. Tremendous runs. Six foot two. By the way, 228. Look at him. Oh, he's on fire. Number 34. Not only is a great run, he's going to be the cheerleader. Don't blame him. Get that defense going. Better not take the safety out of the middle anymore, though. Chief. No, you're right. Ricky Moore will go right up there again. This is Kerry Good. And Greg Carr hits him just when it looked like he might be able to bounce into some open area. Greg Carr whacked him right on the numbers. Keith, they had, uh, Auburn had their basic defense. Now they're taking out the linebacker, uh, Daly, and putting in the extra linebacker. And the reason Alabama's made so much yards running the football, unaccustomed as they've been, and, and Auburn's defense has been so stout, they've been playing five backs on virtually every down, leaving themselves vulnerable against the run. Now they're back. Nickel defense out there, in yeah. effect, that's what it is. That's a four-hand front. That's a good name for it. I forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Walter Lewis bootlegs it out and gets up close to the 25. He may be a little short of his first down. Well, you can't count, Al can't count Alabama out of any football game with Walter Lewis at quarterback. Any player that I've seen this year that, that could run and throw like that, you keep the defense so off balance. Auburn doesn't know what to do. Now comes their defensive people back in the ball game against the run and out goes the nickel back. Sooner or later, they're gonna throw the ball to Jesse Bengrush. And they're gonna go deep right in behind David King, as I said earlier, who likes to jump up and take the run and cover tight. They don't he figure to do it here, though, on third down and one. Everybody's on the line of scrimmage but one man. Big Smith, Doug Smith, grabs a hold of Kerry Good, but Good had pretty good line surge there, and I think he's got his first down. 6'6", 260, runs a 4'8". You expect big plays. This is one fine, fine defensive player. The, the offensive blocker, number 73, Walker, fires by. The play is too delayed. He should have taken a step and tried to turn Smith out instead of firing out and just going to the ground. Smith making another very fine play, number 99. He's had a great ball game. Got his first down by just that much. Lewis fumbles the ball. Auburn's got it. Greg Carr covered it. But the key was the penetration against the option play. Look to the left of your screen. Let's see who gets in the backfield. You can see. Oh, he just dropped the ball. Yep. As uh, Lewis was reading the fullback, the fullback thought that he was going to take it out. Now let's watch Carr, number 54. He's right on it. Four, right there in the play in the backfield, and he falls right on it. Good camera work. Right on the man that we need to see right there, recover the fumble. Third Alabama's quarter is just fumble. about over. Auburn has the football. First down at the Alabama 24. Let's see if they throw it. They got a couple of plays with the wind at their back. This is Chris Woods in trouble. They try to reverse it with a wide receiver, and they knock him down all the way back at the 37-yard line. Oh, the Auburn coaches would like to have that one back. When Alabama came up with a sellout blitz, there was no chance. Third quarter is over. 23-20 Auburn. More after this commercial message and a word from our local station. The rain is now coming down in torrents. Sheets of it tumbling out of that thunderstorm that finally got to town miserable right now my goodness from the 27 first down for Auburn they lead 23 20. 
10 46 to play in the game pitch goes to Bo Jackson tries to slash it over the left side and does to the 30. Auburn has gone into a goal line alignment two tight ends no flankers you know what the purpose is but they're going to try to keep the ball on the ground and keep the clock running control that clock. Rain, rain, and more rain. Second down, seven. Campbell inside with the play to A.G. A.G. keeps his feet alive and works his way to about the 35, but he had both arms wrapped around the ball. Keith, it must be a penalty. The clock, uh, the, yes, yes, there, there it is. is. Officials have stopped the clock. Somewhere in the middle of that melee, and Alabama's backing up. Some type of face defense. mask. Face mask. And it was twisting and turning. It was a 15 yard penalty, wasn't it, Keith? Yeah. Against Alabama. Five yards. Five yards. And first down. That's right. Look that, at that ring. Let's see, AJ, you can see number 30, the fullback, has the ball. It was a kind of a trap play, a finesse play, trying to pop the line. You can see the face mask of the nose guard. He's got his left hand right on the mask. Twist it just enough to get the pin. And the first down up at the 40. Campbell trying to keep it and get outside is tripped up. Looked like Kurt Jarvis, a freshman playing nose guard for Alabama, reached in and grabbed his leg. And the clock shows 9.40 to play in the game and a three-point lead for Auburn. If the rain continues at this pace, you'd have to say that Auburn has advantage not only with their style of play, but leading by three points. If you ever want the rain to come down, it's when you're ahead, not behind. It's just getting harder, too. I don't think it's possible to rain that hard. Look at it. Pitch it. Jackson kicks his head down and goes under the stack and gets a couple of yards on it. So it's going to bring up third down. Keep in this stadium last night that had the state high school championship game. Uh, I was visiting with Pat Dye this morning. I said, Pat, did you have a nice day yesterday? He said, I went to see three parents in different homes for prospects, then came to a football game last night. College coaches got a lot of pressure on him. He also saw 27 fumbles. Rained about like this last night. The problem is going to be snapping for the kicker, getting the ball to the kicker. Third down and eight. Campbell on an option. Turns it upfield and breaks it. Randy Campbell out of bounds at the Alabama 38. That die would tell you that Randy Campbell doesn't throw very beautiful pretty. He doesn't run all that fast, but all he does is beat you. The intangible. Here he takes it upon himself. Alabama's going to make him keep the ball on the option play. He shows that he has good judgment. There's the end trying to take the pitch. And uh, King couldn't make the play as Campbell had just enough speed to go in and back out for the first down. Watch the wide receivers block again. Number one, Woods. This is a third key block. Blocking right now, Thomas, the strong safety, gets up right in the, under the shoulder pads and keeps him out of the play. And it is raining. We can barely see across the stadium. It's raining so hard. This is Bo Jackson, missed by one, but caught by the second, and virtually no gain on the play. Alabama is back up into a goal line defense. Obviously, they know what the strategy is going to be from Auburn, so Alabama has nine men on the line of scrimmage and two safeties right up close as we look at the rain coming down. Goodness. Keith, you're right. It's going to be flooded before long. Yep. I told you to get the oars and the bateau, and you didn't do it. <laughs> Have we ever seen a football game called because of bad weather? Yep. All-Star game, 1976. Yep. In Chicago. Chicago. That's right. Tim Jesse replaces Bo Jackson now. Ron Middleton, number 87, is the second tight end in the game. Age of the fullback with it. And he's knocked down around the 35. That'll bring up third and long for Auburn. And seven minutes, 35 seconds. The rain is uh, working against uh, Alabama right now, and so is the clock. Keep the water is now standing on the field. It's going to be covered before too much longer.
Third down and seven. Ball is given off to Lionel James, and he's brought right at the 35 by Kurt Jarvis. And it brings up fourth down. Randy Edwards, number 96, the right defensive tackle, short yardage. He should be penetrating. He gets and just swims right through, is the term that we use in coaching, inside the offensive left tackle, Wallace, and comes in and makes the play on James. So it's fourth down. It's still seven. It's going to be interesting to see if that guy is going to punt the ball, whether he can or not. They've called a timeout, and they charge it to Auburn. So six minutes and 34 seconds. Now the clock's still running, but Auburn's called a timeout, so they they lost about five seconds on that clock. Well, Del Greco is on the field. I don't. I'm startled by what I'm seeing. It'll be a 51-yard field goal try under the worst conditions you can possibly imagine. The wind is at his back. But you've got to snap it, Keith. You've got to. Well, they haven't it. been able to do it twice already. And twice, that's right. On two other occasions this ball game, they couldn't operate as a team. But snapper, holder, and kicker. Now he's going to punt. That's the best decision. Yes, it is. He, I would have kicked every time. I think most coaches would. I don't know what Pat was trying to do there, but uh, he came back and decided to go ahead and punt the ball. Our producer Chuck Sowell said he was listening to him. <laughs> Lewis Colbert. Well, now the snap. That's the key. You tell your punter, yep. catch the ball. Don't worry about kicking it for Catch it. It's over his head. Get it off. Alabama with a big rush. Oh, he just got it off. And he just barely got it out of there, and he splashes it out of bounds at the five. He's a good one at it. He's been doing it uh, throughout his career, and he hit it only 29 yards, but think about the efficiency of it. Under these weather conditions, with the rain pelting down, the wind in their face, and, and Alabama's got the ball at their own five, and trailing by three. Keith, look how many Alabama white shirts are right on top of it. He got the ball up high, which is what you want to do when you get a rush in a situation like this. All you want to do is kick it high, get it off. And he's worked on this in a, what we call a wet ball drill. He's had this in practice. In fact, Pat Dye told him they did it last Thursday. They snapped the ball with mud and, and water all over, expecting the rain. So when they get in this condition, they, they, they execute it, and they did. You've got six and a half minutes to play. Alabama's 95 yards away from the Auburn goal line, and they're trailing by three points, 23-20. It's amazing how many people are still in the stands. Well, the people in this part of the country love their college football. Birmingham's one of the very great college towns. I think I just saw my first lightning. Keith, I saw the reflection of some just a few minutes ago Did coming you? back over our shoulder. <laughs> Auburn defense is all they've got to do is contain, play their responsibility, not get excited and neglect what their assignments are, and they'll keep Alabama in the pocket. Don't let uh, Walter Lewis get outside and get the big play. Alabama must come out and decide whether they're going to open up and throw the ball with, even with this much rain or whether they're going to try to run it. I doubt if they will. Now they're ready to go as they get a fresh ball on the field. It's, it's virtually impossible to keep it fresh. Ricky Moore is the lone remaining back now as they send Joey Jones in motion. And the uh, whistle stopped them. I think somebody might have moved, was it? It appeared that the Alabama team couldn't quite wait for the snap count and jumped ahead of them. No, no, no. it was encroachment offside by Auburn. They were awfully close in there. Watch number, number 98 That's of Gerald Auburn. Williams. Gerald Williams, yes. Jumping right off, and he's in that uh, neutral zone and makes contact. Oh, that's a break for Alabama. First Certainly and five. Is. First and five is, means a lot. Yeah, this, under these conditions, uh, that deep in your own territory and trailing in a ball game. We've been sitting on six and a half minutes now for quite a while. <laughs> Auburn has a five-man front defensively. They give the ball to M Ricky Moore, and his just brute strength on the part of Ricky is good for two yards so it'll be second down and about three Doug Smith the defensive play for Auburn and the clock is running now Auburn is staying in their basic defense what alignments that they play all year they do not have the nickel in the ball game right now four linebackers three down linemen 
which is ranked 12th in the nation against the rush. If Auburn wins this game, they win the SEC title outright. If they lose it, they share it with Alabama and Georgia. Second down, three. Lewis rolling it out to the right, lobs it upfield. It's intercepted. Picked off by Vic Beasley. And Beasley comes back to the 11. Well, Walter Lewis has played a great ball game and deserves a great deal of credit. The range came on, and when he rolled out to throw the ball, it slipped and goes high. And Beasley, the safety man, lays back and bites the throw. Now, let's watch it from the end zone. It's going to be a bootleg, meaning backs to the right, fake to the left. And Lewis is back on his goal line, and he slipped, the ball slipped right out of his hand. It's the number 81, Chandler, but Beasley comes up. Now, the smart thing that Beasley does, even though he's going to try to score, protect the ball. Don't give it back. Protect that football. You can see he's got it wrapped up real good. Bends over and protects it. Doesn't want to turn it over. The enormous break for Auburn at 5.39 to play in the game. And it's Randy Campbell, the quarterback, keeping to about the seven for a pickup of four. Rain is not quite as hard as it was, but it's still hard enough to drown Most Alabama, people. Yeah, Keith, the Alabama offensive line has, has done their job for them. Uh, with Pat Arrington, all-conference number 76, and David Jordan, the left guard, all-conference both last year and this, this year, and Jackson, of course, having a sensational game. That's Tommy A.G. with the ball. No, nope, they take it outside with it and fumble it, and Alabama's going to come up with it. A.G. had it, and the ball squirted out. I couldn't tell whether he really had it or whether Campbell tried to take it away and give it outside, but the ball came flying out of his grasp, and Alabama recovers its Randy Edwards. A.G. is just a freshman. The option play was going right over the left guard. David, David Jordan, the all-conference blocker, but uh, A.G. did not protect the ball, and it pops out. And you've got 5-0-4 to play in the football game, and Alabama gets the ball back at their seven. The second fumble for A.G., one right before the half that didn't cost Auburn anything. 23-20, Auburn. They won last year 23-22 to break that 10-game Alabama winning string. A long, looping pass downfield, and Joey Jones can't run it down. And now it looks like the wind has turned around one more time. It's sort of favoring Alabama. Well, it would appear that because Walter Lewis threw that ball, Keith, let's see, six, about 55 or 60 yeah. yards down the field. Now, the Auburn defensive cornerbacks uh, were playing way too tight for this situation. They were up very tight, playing the receivers very close. They should deepen up, and I think, and uh, give them the, concede the short pass and not let them get behind it. Warren and David King are the two that have got the tough responsibility. Second down and 10, Alabama from their own seven. Pitch goes to Ricky Moore. Moore splashing along. is hit right along the line of scrimmage by Greg Carr. Number 54. Number 27, David King also coming up on the play. Once he saw that running back get outside, King came like a bullet. Well, King is an all-Southeastern Conference defensive back last year and this. Really aggressive player, likes to come up and tackle, and is an excellent tackle. Number 54, Greg Carr, the all-conference linebacker, leads the team in tackle. It is third down, call it nine. Ball is near the eight. Lewis back. Down the middle, incomplete. There was an All-American collision downfield as Jesse Bendross and Jimmy Warren ran together. And Ben Ross has still not caught a ball in this game. This is the post route. The pass was thrown, and I think beautifully by, by Lewis. Watch right in between the linebacker and the cornerback, Warren. And uh, Ben Ross took his eyes off it. He hit him on the left hip. Should have made the play. Lewis is now 5 out of 20 for 61 yards. And uh, Terry Sanders is in the punt. Out of his end zone. Auburn does not put a safety man back. And Sanders doesn't get much of it. Kind of squibs it upfield, and it is so wet now, the ball just hits like an old soft turnip and dies right there. 404 to play. 23-20, Auburn. 
404 to play. Still rain coming down in sheets here at Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama. The weather was pretty good until we hit the early going of the final quarter. Actually, with about 10 minutes to play in the game. Down it came. Randy Campbell gives to Lionel James. Falls on the ball. Back on the 40. Uh, this possession started about uh, where? Where did it, I can't even see the markers. It's, there's so much water on the field. 5, 10, 15, 20, 10, 36. 36. Yeah. And the loss is four yards. Well, Lionel James took his eyes off the ball. The pitch was back in perfect uh, order, and uh, James was looking to see where he could cut and just dropped it. I don't understand why the clock wasn't running. What did, I guess they stopped it to dry off the ball. Campbell keeps it. Turns it in the middle and goes down about the 38. So they're looking at third down and about 12 now. Alabama's timeouts. Let's see. They have one left. Auburn has one left. Alabama defense, other than a couple of big plays, has, I think, uh, Keith, they've done an outstanding job. Jackson on individual effort, two long runs. The only two touchdowns that they've given up. Right. Played very well. And they've got to stop him here. They're really penetrating and blitzing. Third and 12. It's Campbell getting loose on the option. And they get him short of the first down. He got around the corner in pretty good shape. And then he got ankle deep in water over there and couldn't make a cut back inside. And they've stopped him about three yards short of the first down. It was Sammy Hood who made the play. I would predict that uh, Pat Dye will run the football on this down. Not ri risk a punt but run the football or at least do something to keep the ball on the ground and use up more seconds on the clock, which is the enemy right now of the Alabama team. Coming up on two and a half minutes to play. Alabama with only one time. Auburn. Auburn, Auburn yes, took I mean, Yes. Okay. So Auburn will have no timeouts remaining at two minutes and 32 seconds to play in the game, and the Tigers leading by just three points. Well, there... That set of numbers, I guess, is about the summary of things, isn't it? 232 is definitely in Auburn's favor. The scoreboard is in their favor. And they apparently are going to run the football here because Alabama has only one timeout remaining and probably would be reluctant to spend it until they get farther down the clock. But right now the chore is to get the ball away from Auburn. It is fourth and three. And it's Bo Campbell throwing. That's going to get flags. Chris Woods ran up the back of the Alabama defender. Now was the Alabama man blocking him, Sammy Hood? Keith, or was it offensive interference? If it's offensive interference, it's a 15-yard penalty and loss of down, which means they'll move the ball out to the 45-yard line and give Alabama a chance. Johnny Cook, the referee, indicating that it's going to go that way. Oh, that's a tough break against Auburn. It's going to really put their defense to the test. Good call, Keith. Offensive interference against Chris Wood. He ran right up the back of Sammy Hood. Well, it's, we talked about it during the year that the offensive man's responsibility is to miss dodge the defensive man. Now you can see it's a 15-yard penalty and loss of down. And Alabama ain't dead yet. It's a loss of down. That's a loss of down. So it's first down. Obviously, Johnny's equipment is wet. Sorting out on him. Two minutes and 26 seconds to play in the ball game. You see the collision there. The offensive man went right up the back of the defensive man. And if I can just figure out where the football is, it's on the 44. What looked like a virtually impossible situation for Alabama now comes to a possibility, if not a probability. Clock will start with 2.26 to play in the ball game, and Lewis back to throw. Can't get it away. Batted down at the line of scrimmage. Might have been Donnie Humphrey that slapped it away. Number 79. Humphrey made all Southeastern Conference in 1981. Number 79, let's watch the bottom of your screen, was redshirted last year with an injury. Couldn't play. But he does the great thing. He jumps just at the time and knocks it down with his right hand. Number 79. That's great pass defense there. That's the kind the coaches like. The ball never gets away from the line of scrimmage. Second down, 10. Run it. 
Carrying it is Perry Good, and he goes for a first down as he reaches the Auburn 45. And the clock shows two minutes and ten seconds to play in the game. We must remember that uh, Auburn is only leading by three points. I hope I read it right this time. <laughs> Field goal would, would still give Auburn an outright championship if they tied. So I think Alabama would go for the touchdown and disdain the field goal. First and ten. Ball on the Auburn 45. Walter Lewis, a little quick one over the middle. It is slapped away and intercepted by Vic Beasley. He was intended for Preston Gothard. Slapped away and into the arms of Vic Beasley with his second interception of the day. Just a tremendous effort by the safety man. Leaving his feet as the ball was deflected and scooping it off of the turf for the interception. Another big play. You can see the, the tight end, number 86, Preston Goffin, is wide open. The ball is right on the target. All he has to do is look it in. But Campbell, Tommy but Powell. Powell, number nine, knocks it away. Now watch this effort. Powell, excuse me, Beasley makes a great effort and comes in up with the interception. And Alabama now three turnovers in the football game. Auburn with two. Time remaining, one minute, 53 seconds. Auburn has the ball and a three-point lead. Again, all you need to know, really, one minute and 53 seconds to play in the football game. A three-point lead Auburn. Vic Beasley's second interception has given the Tigers the ball at their own 32. Alabama with the one timeout to play with. Ball goes to Bo Jackson, picks his way through the crowd, gets it across the 35 to the 36. Bo Jackson has had the biggest day of his career. And the most valuable players in today's ball game, the Chevrolet MVPs for Alabama. Defensive tackle, Randy Edwards. He's been a stalwart defensive warrior for the Tide. But Bo Jackson, well, he carried 20 times for 255 yards, two touchdowns. Auburn with the football, second down and about eight. And you see the time remaining. Uh, they can't run it out. Alabama spent its last time out now. They're, going to, they're still going to have to give it up, aren't they? If they don't make a first down, Keith, it will come right down to the, to the very last 10 or 15 seconds before they have to punt the ball. If they were much closer back to their own goal line, they would give them a safety rather than punt it. But right here, I think they would go ahead and punt it. Well, they got a first down. That may slam the door. Randy Campbell one more time for the War Eagles. The option play is still the toughest to defend in football as we look at Ray Perkins and now the Auburn staff feeling victory right within their grasp. Now they can run the clock out without snapping the ball. If they want to, they can fall on it and uh, use the 25 seconds between plays and the ball game will be over and Auburn will be the champions outright. What a great year for Pat die and his team no timeouts remaining for either team for that matter and they just snap the ball and uh, get the clock rolling and they'll be just as deliberate as they possibly can for the Auburn Tigers a record of nine and one on the season their only loss was to the powerful Texas Longhorns in the second game of the season and it happened down at Auburn but since that time, they rolled off a succession of victories. It's been a big day for a lot of people. Vic Beasley with two pass interceptions for Tommy Powell, who has played very well in the secondary as a freshman. Beasley is a junior. We've got an offside call against Alabama. So that's five yards to bring up first down and five. That did, however, stop the clock at 110 to play in the game. But they started back, Keith, on, on penalties now in college. See, right. So they wind the clock down. I, I must say that both coaching staffs have done a tremendous job. The Alabama offensive scheme to take advantage of the strong Auburn defense was outstanding. Adding the option play and making big yardage on it. Kept Auburn them in the will go on to play Michigan in the Sugar Bowl January 2nd in the evening here on ABC television. Alabama will go out to the Sun Bowl to play SMU. And now the clock is rolling again. They've got to get one more snap off. And so in their first meeting, Pat Dye has bested Ray Perkins by a score of 23-20. The outcome of the game at this juncture is academic. Pat James told me this morning, he said, Frank, Pat we Dye. just kept, excuse me, Pat Dye told me this morning, all we've done is just churn and churn, and the cream has come to the top this year. 
outstanding leadership in this second half, Keith. They asserted themselves much better than they did in the first half of this ball game. And they have just won their second successive victory over the Crimson Tide of Alabama. They won a year ago, 23-20. They win in 1983 by a score of 23-20. to And it is the first Southeastern Conference championship for the Auburn Tigers since 1957. That dog got his conventional ride off the field over to the vesting coach, and he gets down to shake hands with Ray Perkins. They will be battling each other for many, many years. Well, 23 points has been a magic number for the Auburn Tigers. They won by with 23 points by a point a year ago. They win by three today with 23. Keith, we saw a great inspired effort by both teams. Played very well in most of the circumstances. Emotional in every sense of the word.